Jim, you are in the carbon reduction business, I guess we could say. Uh, give the viewers, the watchers out there who who never heard of dinosaur, or maybe who, you know, it's not dinosaur, it's dinosaur. Give the people out there who've never heard. What do you do? What's your what's your technology, or what's the magic that you bring to the market? For sure. Thank you, Byron. Uh, I mean, we are we're not a new company. We've been 20 years in research and development to get this thing to the point where it was commercialized and we're making sales. And now we're selling around the world. But what we have is very unique. It, it's a, a type of electrolysis system that is put onto an internal combustion engine, primarily diesel engines, to enhance the burn. We're not a fuel, we are a catalyst. But by doing this, we improve the fuel economy on an average 10 to 15%. More importantly is the reduction in the carbon footprint. We reduce the toxic gases within the internal combustion engine north of 50% clear across the board. And this is done right at the source, right at the combustion. It's not a filtration. And you know, so by doing that, uh, we've had this thing tested and certified globally mm -hmm. to, to do this. And more importantly now, you know, this has been proven out into the industries and we are now getting repeat orders. And certainly, you know, they're driven by the fuel economy, the improved fuel economy because of the cost of diesel is so high. But everybody is also very, very conscientious these days of the importance to reduce the carbon footprint. Okay. So well, so, so you, you manufacture a box that we can bolt onto a diesel engine is that is that a fair way to describe it that is right simple way but fair yeah, yeah. that's a, uh, i mean we have multiple size units i mean our first target to market was class 8 trucks or transport trucks probably the toughest market to penetrate but we have now successfully done that but we have now gone from that we've got multiple size units where we are now in the large mining industry we just recently announced six of the 10 largest mining companies in the world that have run pilot projects and are now getting repeat orders, you know, where they are adopting our technology on these larger moving units, on these large power generators and things like that also. So, so when I th everybody out there is watching this, I'm sure you have driven down the highway and you've seen some big 18 wheeler rolling down the road there and you've seen the big smokestacks that are belching the black goop out there. So is, is your technology designed to eliminate you know, soot and the nitrogen oxides as well as the CO2 emissions. But reduce, not eliminate, but you know, reduce the number. It reduces it all, Myron, and that's a great question. You know, you look at you know, the black smoke, that's the particulate matter. We reduce that north of 50%. All the toxic gases were reduced north of 50%. The NOx is actually reduced up to 88%. Wow. And the important thing to understand is, like I said, this is right at the combustion. This is not filtration. This mm -hmm. is... You know, it makes such a big difference when it's being done right at the combustion. I, okay, very good. Now you mentioned mining equipment. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, as an investor, Intel person, and as a geologist, I've been around a few mines. And I've yep. seen these giant trucks that are bigger than a house. You know, uh, and they're they're hauling these you know you know dozens of tons of ore up the ramps and up the slopes and everything. These guys can use you know a million dollars a year worth of diesel fuel. In in my knowledge, uh, do you? reduce the, the fuel burn? I mean, is that one of the selling points to the mining company is that we can, we'll clean up your, your emissions and we'll improve your efficiency? Absolutely. On an, on an average, we're reducing the, the fuel economy or we're improving the fuel economy north of 10%. Wow. Uh, you know, anywhere, I mean, we talk from six to 19%, but certainly in those big trucks, everyone that we've seen, they're in the 10 plus percent range, just in the improved fuel economy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are cleaning up the soot and the goop that comes out of the combustion, are you also just sort of improving the efficiency of the engine in terms of oil life, lubric, you know, other lubricants, uh, wear and tear on the on the on you know the, the whole the whole torque system and everything? Do, do, does that help? Yeah, it's a great question, and and you certainly look at it. I mean, you know, we talk about the oil. Uh, I mean, you know, oil is something that breaks down within, you know, within a period of time that starts wearing out an engine. Soot content in the oil is what breaks down the oil. We have had it tested where, you know, you know, a typical on a class eight transport truck, 
the typical oil change, they're looking at 8% plus soot content. With our unit on it, it's coming back at less than 1% soot content. So that reduces the wear in the engine. But then you look at the, the def fluid and, uh, you know, and all that, you know, certainly there's, now they're talking shortages of def fluid or, or diesel exhaust fluid around the world. We reduce that, you know, by, you know, an average 30 to 40% use because of the reduced at NOx or NOx that's that uh, because the computer determines the NOx and based on that it determines how much death fluid is used. Well, a couple other things. Um, so you've talked about the the big eighteen wheelers on the highway. You've talked about big mining equipment, uh, power generation equipment such as a, at a big facility, what have you. Um, I, I take it that there, there's a there's a runway here or an avenue to get into say railroads which have diesel locomotives. Uh, ocean shipping, which is, you know, big, great, big, huge diesel engines down in the bowels of a ship. I mean, uh, we, you know, just in a, th you know, are, are you working down, are you looking down that pathway as well? We certainly are. We certainly see that it is, you know, as a big avenue uh, locomotive. Uh, you know, watch the news in the near future. I think there'll be something talking about the locomotive industry. Uh, we talk about the big shipping, you know, that is, we're not in the big ships yet. We've been in, in some of the smaller ones, but you know, certainly we get into the big cargo ships or the big container ships. Interesting stat, you know, about a year ago there was stats came out that one container ship puts out the equivalent of a hundred million cars per year in pollution. We're so worried about cars. And that is an area that has been, I mean, now they're starting to come under scrutiny and stuff like that, but certainly, you know, we look at those areas, uh, that is certainly an area where we feel very strongly that we can make a real difference and uh, in both fuel economy and the reduced emissions. So, so you, you have, you've been, you spent 20 years developing this technology. I take it you have patents all around, you built a moat around your castle, so to speak, and you address that issue? Absolutely. We actually have, to date, we've got 21 patents now in six different families. We have spent a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort to make sure that our technologies were strongly patented. Uh, I would say also one of the most recent and strongest patents we have, we've got a worldwide patent on the means and methods of monitoring and monetizing carbon credits within internal combustion engines, where you know we see that as, as certainly the big part of our future also. Well, does this put you into not just the, the the business of selling magic boxes that people bolt onto their engine, but in terms of monitoring data from those boxes back in you know central central control, a mothership uh, where you're you're literally tracking you know this truck, that truck, this mining equipment, that generator as it rolls down the road or whatever. So you have. A, I don't want to say this. This is kind of like uh, Microsoft selling a software license. Is that, am I being, over, am I overstating it or is that? No, no, of, that's a very fair assumption. And yes, we have what we have, we call the Hydrolytica, uh, which is trademarked. Our Hydrolytica is the software collection or it, it's really, it's like a fleet management system on steroids. Uh, mm -hmm. It gives you all the data that a fleet management system would, but it also measures the improved fuel economy and measures the reduction in carbon footprint or greenhouse gases. And this is done on a minute by minute, you know, day by day. And this is hard data. There's no human intervention. This is our hydrolytic, it, you know, adapts to the computer of an engine where all this data is, is uh, extracted. And so we now have a data center here because as we're moving into the carbon credit world, uh, that data is critical. Okay, so you 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 manufacture a, a, a hard product that you sell. You uh, gather the information back from the product and help fleet management. Uh, and you're in the carbon management, carbon credit business. Uh, and and uh, and and I guess uh, what are you going to do this afternoon? Is the sort of the next question. Uh, it's uh, you're one stop shopping for uh, quite a few things. Uh, you. We could talk about this all day, but obviously our, our listeners and viewers have other things to do. But you have a website, you have information on your website, you have, you know, in, uh, point of contact if people have questions. Uh, Dynacert, D-Y-N-A-C-E-R-T. Uh, you trade in the Toronto Exchange and in the OTC markets in the USA. 
Uh, and so uh, last word, Jim. Well, the last word I would say, I mean, you know, we know that COP27 just finished and, and certainly the biggest focus over there was climate change. And, uh, you know, we are so busy or the world's so busy talking about climate change and what we're going to do in the future, uh, which is a very important. I mean, it's very important to us. But the reality is Dinosaur has a technology right now today that can make such a substantial difference. I'm not saying it's the end all. It's not it's not the the end result. But, you know, certainly it is such a, a massive bridge to that, you know, where right now by doing this, you know, we can reduce the emissions so significantly and at the same time improve the fuel economy and we all know prices of fuel are, have gone to the roof. Absolutely. Well, people talk about shovel ready projects and I guess we'd call yours a, a screwdriver ready or a, 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 a torque wrench ready uh, project. Uh, Jim Payne, Dynasert, thank you so much for being uh, with us and uh, for the Intel or for the Investor Intel viewers out there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this, is a, this, this company is worth watching, okay? Watch it, okay? Thank you.